So um, I'm really excited to have our next speaker here. He is uh, he's someone who has been driving collaborative development and open source movements for years, and he is also someone who provided a lot of support for OpenStack and for the OpenStack Foundation as we were getting started. So please help me welcome to the stage the executive director of the Linux Foundation, Jim Zimlin. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks for having me. You know, uh, when I mentioned to someone that I was coming to the OpenStack uh, event this week, they said, you know, Jim, that's a good event for you to go to because nobody cares about Linux anymore, right? Now, OpenStack, now that is where it is at. And, you know, I'm looking around the room here, and I think they might be right. You guys should give yourselves a round of applause. You get, this is an amazing, amazing group of people. So uh, what I wanted to talk about today is uh, how open source is changing fundamentally technology. Open source is really redefining the tech industry. It seems like you hear on every layer of the technical stack, whether it's networking, whether it's cloud computing, whether it's the Internet of Things, web frameworks, you name it, in every sector of tech, there is a hot open source project that is really defining that particular category of technology. And the question that I wanted to talk to all of you about this morning is why. Why is open source so important, and how can you get the most out of open source? And Jonathan already mentioned one of the things that's happening that's making open source software so important. And that is the software-defined economy. Mark Andreessen put it well in an op-ed piece in 2011 when he used the word, software is eating the world. If you think about every aspect of our lives, whether it's mobile devices, automobiles, the cloud, you name it, the value in all of these things is really being driven by software. And in software, open source is eating the software world. What we're really seeing in software is a fundamental change in the way it's being developed. Moving from sort of a little bit of open source usage that people might have known about at the edge of the network, they weren't quite sure where it was, to really a strategic use of open source. To put it simply, there's too much software to be written for any one organization to write this software on their own. And so what's happening is businesses are recognizing this, and they're moving towards really a Pareto principle of open source, an 80-20 rule, where 80% of the software in any product or service out there today is open source. Companies are shedding commodity R&D. They've discovered a better, faster, cheaper way to create software. What this allows business to do is to focus on only the most important aspects of their technology stacks, only the things that truly differentiate that organization. In some cases, their differentiator may not be software at all. They can give all their software away because all people really care about are their users and the data. Think of it this way. The top 10 technology companies in the world spend around about $64 billion on research and development. This is largely an internal research and development spend. But what's interesting is 80% of the code in their products and services comes from outside of their organizations, from projects like this, like OpenStack. And so the question to ask is, if you're getting most of the code from outside of your organization, how are you managing your external research and development? And this is the thought I want to leave you with today, which is to get the most out of open source software across any component of open source, it's important to think about it systematically. And the best technology companies in the world, in fact, do this. 
Let me actually introduce you to a few people here. These are actually external R&D managers. Chris DeBona from Google, Eileen Evans from HP, Tsugikazu Shibata from NEC. All of these people run organizations in their companies with actually large groups whose sole purpose is managing open source software development. The consumption and the redistribution of 80% of the code in most of their products and services. This is critically important for you to do because open source collaboration really requires a new set of skills. Even though open source has been around a while, now that it's become the dominant form of software development, it's important to understand how to pick the right projects, how to understand the intellectual property frameworks that govern those projects, how to understand the social coding style within those projects, and how to understand integrating, collecting that code within your organization, improving it, making changes, giving those changes back to the central project, and creating products and services that creates this virtuous cycle of continuous improvement for both your company and for the open source project. This is an incredibly important thing for all of you and your companies to master. So if you don't have an external R&D org at your organization, you should start doing that right now. Because the question to ask is, are you ready for the next open source blockbuster. And by the way, what does an open source blockbuster really look like? Well, let me show you. It looks a little like this. Does anyone recognize thousands of individuals, hundreds of companies, events filled to the gills like this? OpenStack, without question, is a blockbuster. You are all doing an amazing job. Linux, as well changes nine times an hour, represents a $10 billion collective R&D investment. Every market that Linux has gone into, it has conquered. And all of these things are important, but not enough. You have done incredibly well. The business value here is incredible. But that is not enough to explain why open source is so important and why all of you are on the right side of history. I want to show a short video that I didn't think defines what an open source blockbuster is all about. Let's roll the video. We had a family PC since uh, about 2010, and in 2012, I started, I heard of uh, Linux and I started experimenting uh, with it a lot. I think my first uh, distro was Ubuntu 12.04 uh, that I tried out in uh, VirtualBox. I don't know too much programming, I don't even know much programming, but I would still uh, love to learn programming and even get a job. You know, maybe someday I could probably become a sysadmin in Linux. I could uh, help people use Linux. It was a school project, of course. I decided to send a letter to uh, Linus Torvalds. He was my hero, and um, I was actually doubting I would actually be able to find out, you know, who I could send it to. Then I remembered how much I love Linux, and, you know, how much I wanted to meet Linus Torvalds, so I decided to send him a letter. You know, all my f other friends sent letters to, you know, more Hollywood or internet celebrities, but, uh, I doubt they actually got flown to, you know, a good place like this to meet them. Meeting Linus Torvalds was a great experience. Once the um, whole panel thing was done, he went out of the stage, um, went to uh, my row, and we shook hands. And he signed my uh, Linux Bible, and he gave me a copy of his uh, Just for Fun book, with a signature, of course. I loved meeting uh, Linus Torvalds, and it was a great experience overall. I got to have got to have so much uh, goodies or swag, and it made me think, you know, all this, all these things like my future is going to be great, and um, you know, I loved it.
Helping an 11-year-old boy have the best day of his life, that is an open source blockbuster. And when you're working on OpenStack, when you're creating this wonderful code and thinking just about the business and maybe you're having disagreements, I want you all to remember, you are on the right side of history. Because Richard Stallman was right. Sharing matters. What you are doing is bigger than any one of you. You are all working on something where you can better yourself, you can better your company, and you can better the world. And that is a very rare thing. And I want to thank all of you for this amazing work. Thank you very much.